All right, welcome back. Got a sizable package from our friends at White Mountain Knives today. Um, excited to get into this one because it contains a brand of knife that I have not actually used before, but is known as a high value um, kind of brand um, in terms of what they deliver for what you get. It's supposed to be really good. So let's get into it here and just make sure this is all anonymous. Should be good. <clears throat> uh, White Mountain Knives, really cool place to buy from. They do a few things I like really. Uh, one, great communication. Two, uh, very readily available discount codes, which I'm not mad, especially with the number of knives that I buy. And three, um, really good. Uh, Shipping uh, just seems like a kind of like a knife person's knife company, if you know what I mean. You know, like I don't know how better to describe it, but I'll just pull this off screen real quick and make sure I got through everything I wanted to. I'd like to try and maintain this box if I can because uh, I actually need boxes these days quite a bit. So. Bear with me a split second while I do my best to... Yeah, never mind. <laughs> we have sacrificed this box for the entertainment of the audience. Boom! QSP. Boom! QSP. Boom! QSP. What's wrong with this guy? Boom! Another QSP! Funny thing is, you can buy four QSPs and spend less than a low-end Demco. <laughs> um, I don't know, maybe not. Eh, pretty close, if not the same or less. I think I got these four knives for less money than that knife right there, and that's a inexpensive Demco. Let alone a Chris Reeves, let alone a Medford, let alone, let alone, let alone Rock Rockstead, etc. So I've been just you know seeing a lot about QSPs over the over time and was just seeing the prices i was like you know what let me just get a bunch on the channel here so we're just going to take them as they come here um d2 brass handle denim micarta penguin so i got a couple penguins i actually have another parrot coming from a different company because i couldn't find the one i wanted d2 parrot denim micarta and then d2 uh blade pangolin because this one to me is uh, kind of interesting. I'm going to focus this video on these three. Uh, and just really quickly, I'm going to do a different video for this one. Because uh, it needs to be. The main reason I got this one. And if you go to the pen going, this is kind of cool. Little card here. Um, I like the box so far. That's, I will say, like quality feeling so far for like the price point seen a lot of cheap knives come in pretty like low quality boxes I think that's like a magnet yeah it's like a magnet in there so that's kind of nice um the packaging feels pretty darn good for what I spent on these knives but what does that remind you of could it potentially be something like that no no similarities there <laughs> wow that is uh you know it's not a frame lock or anything but that's actually to its advantage being a liner lock. This knife reminds me so much of this knife. You can even see it's like almost like a shameless copy. Now what I'll notice right away is it's not knocked down. It's a little sharp on this, uh, on the top of the blade, but my gosh, that is uh, very clearly uh, going after the hinder. <laughs> um, and I, you know, go pick a different model, right? The Evo, or, um, uh, I said Evo, I meant uh, Eclipse, I think even has this extra, you know, uh, I got to pull out my Eclipse, but wow, really nice action. But yeah, I mean, even the same from an Ergo perspective, uh, I mean, that is a very, very clear... Uh, I won't call it a clone because it's not, you know, trying to be a hinderer. It's not, you know, being sold essentially with the same patents and all that stuff. Like you've seen clones. If you know a clone, you know a clone. Um, but 
it is definitely, let's see if we can pull out an Eclipse really quickly, and then we'll jump into the other knives. Uh, da, 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 it's this one. So we have a, an Eclipse there, and yeah, I mean, that is, aside from the fact that this one is a, a, a non-flipper Eclipse, look how similar that is. <laughs> that's even on another level of similarity um so that's pretty funny but i gotta say i don't know what this costs 50 bucks or something like that versus 425 if you can get in line and get one uh you don't have this is a no choil which is interesting dude the action's phenomenal like that is really good definitely don't like the pocket clip a lot that's pretty cheapo so you can start to see some of where the some of the corners are cut i mean obviously titanium versus a g10 you know with inlaid um steel liner so but i gotta tell you the feel in hand is really nice let me show you this g10 it's i really like g10 when it's done this way I'm a big fan. It almost gives you like a carbon fiber feel and look to it a little bit. Sorry, the lighting's not great here. Maybe I can try and get a little more light on it because it's a black knife. It's a little hard to see here. But really like the, the G10 on there. Even more so than on the Hinderer, to be honest. Like, now the Hinderer has some, you know, you get this thing in your hand and it's got some qualities to it, don't get me wrong. But the action's almost as good. I prefer a liner lock. I mean, <laughs> you don't get a thumb stud on this. That's missing. Um, but shit, that is a really nice knife for the money. That's actually better than I expected. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you like the idea of the hinderer and what sort of the experience of the hinderer without the cost, QSB Pangolin, uh, that is really, really impressive. <laughs> uh, the knife world, that is funny. The, uh, blade, you know, D2 blade steel, it's a quality blade steel and it's got a really nice grind on it. Let's see how the edge is. It's certainly not on the same level as the Hinderer. Let's see if I can actually get my Eclipse out. I can never consistently get this out right when it comes out of the box. I don't think I'm going to get it out today. I've been doing too many uh, knife videos. This is my third for today. <laughs> um, but man, that is uh, really similar there in a lot of ways. Sorry, I can definitely get it out, but just not a uh, one-handed deployment. Uh, this one's brand new working finish. It's definitely needs to get broken in to show what it's like. You know, I'm not trying to give an example there of a hinderer's setback, but I do will say like there are some, you know, concerns I have with a frame lock, uh, you know, not being my favorite. Uh, deployment methods so uh and just this thing i don't know these hinderers have just insane detent this one's like a pre-owned one that i got that's pretty well worked in and it's super smooth like this knife is not comparing to that on the smoothness on deployment you know i may have to take that back it is probably 80 to 90 percent as smooth it is really good and this is right out of the box too That is satisfying. Chimping. This is probably the biggest negative I'm seeing is the, uh, let's see if I can get a close up on this here. You can even see some dead skin came off on there. Look, if you need something to spark a fire, this is pretty good, but it's definitely not, uh, not a comfortable edge up there. That is much nicer on a real hinderer. I'm calling it real hinderer, I should say on a hinderer, because this is not, although it's a very similar knife, it's certainly a different knife, and it's not a hinderer clone or anything like that. They're not 
trying to pretend it's a hitter. It's a pangolin, but it's certainly inspired very closely by this knife. <laughs> so that kind of caught my eye. I was just like perusing the White Mountain knife site for other um, QSPs. And this thing, I was like, what the hell? <laughs> that thing looks just like a hinderer size wise and everything. I mean, it is, let's put it up against the Eclipse because that again is just somewhat shameless, but very similar. It's a little bigger than that one. How about the XM18? A little taller even than these guys. So nice knife though. Um, I'm impressed. That's a great first impression. So, hey, that's my first QSP impression. Uh, so far so good. I feel like I just did a full video just on that one. Unfortunately, I knew I had a feeling if I pulled that one out first, I was gonna pull out hinderers and do exactly what I just did, which was like I'm gonna just pull this out real quick and then set it aside because I knew I could do a whole video on that just based off of. So maybe I'm not gonna do one on that one anymore. <laughs> we'll see. I don't think I really need to. Um, you get the point. Let's put these uh, aside and try not to break anything. And let's, uh, you know, that's a, unfortunately the other ones are, you know, a bit of a step down. I'll go parrot first because I got two penguins. But, you know, what they are is similar quality to the knife you just saw. Um, not as nice as a Vox, I'll tell you that. Um, but just, you know, a smaller package in a different format. And yeah, maybe it's not as nice of a quality knife, I'll be honest. Just immediate, immediate impression does not indicate that. I do really, uh, I am really impressed with this micarta. I'm not a big micarta guy, um, but this feels really nice. It's almost, you know, it's supposed to be this like blue jean micarta, I think. This is the denim micarta, and I get it. Uh, that was really nice. The action out of the box is phenomenal, phenomenal. Like, very few knives I've gotten out of the box, like the the closest thing I could describe to that action would actually be a bug out um, where they're just really kind of elasticy. Like you just know you're not going to fight the detent. The detent does its job, but it doesn't fight you. Like this is not coming out, but it doesn't fight you when you're deploying it. Wow, that is really good. So that, I don't know, uh, I have a G10 version coming in for like $25 on sale. This one, I think, is like a $33 MSRP or something. You're getting D2 blade steel. A really nice grind and blade shape. Like, that is really impressive looking. Um, I don't love the satin finish. I think it's a little on the shiny side. Um, if I was picking, I'd go with something a little less shiny than that. This one looks like it's maybe got a little preservation oil on it. So let's get some of that off of there. Um, it's a very slicey blade profile, just like on the Pangolin. The biggest thing immediately to me is the sharpness. So, you know, you could hit that with a little sandpaper or a grinding stone or, you know, um, you know, even a sharpener, um, to knock that down a little bit yourself. You know, if you're saving, if you're paying one tenth of the price, um, there's an argument to be made there. Wow, what a nice knife for the money. Perfectly centered, quite elegant. It's simple for sure, but a just really nice draw point blade, a very functional pocket clip. It's very cheap looking, I'll say that. Like that's, it's not like a full deep carry. So that's probably one of the biggest drawbacks I'm seeing aside from that like not knock down edge um, would be that carry clip is very, uh, leaves a lot to be desired, but I'm sure that there's a million one options for a, uh, a carry clip. I really like the drop point, or is that a spear point? Let's say on here. Da -da -da -da. It doesn't say, but I do believe if I'm seeing that correctly, that looks very much like a it's either a spear point or a drop point, but I think it's a spear point. I think that looks almost the same. If 
you're not familiar, spear point would be traditionally the exact same on both sides. Up here, it might throw you off and make it look like a drop point. That's why I kind of said that, but it might be a spear point. Um, who cares? Either way, it's a great blade shape. Phenomenal deployment here. Like my biggest concern, is that a good lockup? How does that have such good lockup and such easy deployment? My biggest concern would be like, does this thing stay like this or does it just get really crappy over time? Just given the, uh, you know, the amount of money I paid for it, I guess more than anything. Let's see if I can find some paper. I gotta see if this thing cuts as well as it looks like it does. Hang on one sec. Okay. Quick piece of paper out here. It's not, it's really good, but it's not like, it's good. Yeah, it's really good. It's not um, the best I've ever felt. Let's see if I have something here. Get this uh, tactile magnet cut. Like that's a little slicier. I'd say my Spider Co is probably one of the sliciest knives I have. Or just glides through there. That thing is just amazing how, how it does that. Um, but for $33, what the hell? Okay, I get why a lot of people have reviewed and revered, you know, these guys. So the next one I want to get into is the uh, Penguin, which is, to me, I don't know. I'll, we'll take it at, look out. At, it kind of looked at face value like a variant. Let me get the hand feel real quick before we move on. Hang on. Feels really good in the hand. Um, a little small, obviously. It's a small knife, but aside from needing to be knocked down up here, uh, and no real choke up point, but you don't really feel like you need it, to be honest. Yeah, feels really good in the hand. Like it's, you know, what is there to go wrong, right? It's basically a block. <laughs> but, you know, they make it a little longer here for your pinky to stay on there and feels really good in the hand. Um, so no complaints there aside from, you know, on a utility cut, not gonna be great, which brings me to the penguin. Um, you know, that's really what it does well. So let's go there. What is this? A little sticker from these guys. Let's let's throw their fun little sticker in here. Um, I'm just got that upside down. Let's move some of this stuff over here. And let's go with the lower end one first, because that's more of a direct comparison of the one that I just unboxed. USP ain't messing around with their sticker game, by the way. <laughs> they are, uh, they make sure you get their stickers. I like their little, like, technical cards, and they got a little, uh, um, you know, you can scan that and go probably get more info on the knife or whatever. I like that play. Uh, penguin. So these are copper washers? Huh. Is that, I would have guessed that was on bearings, but if that's, that's amazing if that's a washer. I didn't even know that. Um, I'm sure I said it on the websites I bought them from. Um, but I didn't even realize. So that thing's a little heftier versus the Parrot. The Parrot's the lightweight. The Parrot's the bug out mini. So what was that? That was the one that came with that one. This one came with this one. Let's try and keep these straight just for fun. Um, this feels bigger. And I don't know if it's just the blade. But that's my immediate impression. All right. And I did want to mix it up a little bit so that I wouldn't normally carry a, uh, you know, a coated, a black coated knife. I thought it'd be kind of cool to have a couple different uh, variants of, from a looks perspective. Maybe we'll just leave this guy out here. Sorry for the back and forth. Let's throw this back in and then bring this out. I want to see size-wise how, how comparable they are because I don't know I've really seen. I've watched a couple of videos on these, but I you know I don't need to spend a lot of time watching reviews before I buy a thirty-dollar knife personally. Um, let's see what the, the thumb stud's a little pokey, but totally functional still. Where I'm I'm recently just starting to spend more, do more of like the thumb versus the fingernail flick. And that one feels very good for that. Um, anyways, what's the size comparison? They're a little bit of a different shape, but generally the same size, right? Um, this one feels like it's going for a little more ergonomics in hand. 
Um, but I feel like this one, it does feel a little smaller. Um, you know, this one has that like little extension at the end. I don't know if they're the same. Let's see how, yeah, I know it's, they're pretty much the same length. So going for a very similar thing. That blue jean, my car does fun. I don't know how they do that. Uh, I'd have to do a little research, but it feels very soft in your hand. So that's cool. Or denim micarta. That's neat. Uh, it must be some sort of milling powder or something. That's definitely one of the highlights of these is a really nice micarta for $33 or whatever. I think this one's the same price as that one, if I recall correctly, or close to it. Maybe that one was $29. I think that one's $29. Bucks. It's even less expensive than what I just said. Um, Better carry clip here. So that's a huge upgrade to me. This is only a $3 more knife. This one's the one that's $33. That's a big upgrade. And it looks like it's uh, reversible. And what I don't like is you got non-flush screws on the other side. I wonder if you could just take those out because that's kind of lame to have non-flush screws. You can kind of get a little more purchase when you're pulling it out of your pocket with that. Um, but in this case, they're just not, there's no screws there. So that's interesting that they put screws in this one, which I think is inferior if they're not like kind of inset. I don't know why they would do that right on the pocket clip. Um, so that's kind of lame, which means it's sticking up on the other side as well, as you can see. Um, so you get a better pocket clip generally, but then you also don't, uh, from there, there you, you sacrifice a little. This is definitely a better pocket clip. Um, now the top of the knife blade is knocked down, which is really nice. So that was, that's a huge shortcoming on this guy. And, uh, this feels really nice. You know what? Uh, this, you know, I think they're actually, I think this uh, Devo knife is made by QSP and it, it feels really similar. Uh, it feels really similar uh, in how they knock down the blade. That's kind of funny. Uh, that immediately, as soon as I felt it, drew my, wow, what a nice knife for the price. I see why everyone hypes this thing up and talks about it. It's part of why I didn't do it for so long. So it's like, eh, they got a million people that um, have done videos on that knife. I don't really need to do it for any reason. And granted, almost every one of my knives has a million videos on it already. Some of them not. Like I did, I think I did the one of the first free reign videos on Demco. Um, I've got a couple of videos that are kind of unique. Um, but for the most part, um, you know, I, I don't want to go do something that's been like totally overdone. I kind of like doing some revisits, like the Ontario Rat 2 revisit was kind of fun. I don't think anyone's doing really a lot of Ontario Rat 2 videos these days. Um, Lockup's nice. It's a little, um, it's like a good 40 or 50%. So you could see that potentially uh, being interesting to keep an eye on. Some liner locks can be kind of, you know, fail over time. Um, but man, that is a, another real, new, really nice knife from a value perspective. Let me see if I can get the reverse flick on that one. Yeah, oh yeah, really nicely actually. Um, this knife reminds me a lot, um, in some ways worse, in some ways better, of the Wee Banter. Um, really good thumb stud action like the Wee Banter has. Let's pull that guy out. Uh, it's one of my favorite thumb stud action knives. Uh, just really consistent deployments. It's like everything on this knife is designed for actually using the knife, um, which I really like. I gotta carry this at some point. I don't know if I've ever actually carried it, but I really, I have carried it. Like I spent a little time this summer with it in my shorts, actually. It's a little heavy for shorts, actually, but it's very similar in a lot of ways here. Um, so that really draws some parallels for me. This one more on the blade shape, but the, uh, the weight of this one this, this knife feels a lot lighter than this one, which is interesting. This one feels heavier even than the Wee Banter, which is like a full G10. Um, so anyways, definitely feeling this uh, Devo in there. Not quite on the same fit and finish and whatnot materials, but let's, uh, I gotta pull off the scale now. This has really got me curious. 
I'm sure this has been weighed in a million or other videos, but I don't know what it weighs. So that's what we're going to do. <laughs> Getting up to 25 minutes, so we're going to get through this and try and wrap up here with the last knife. But um, yeah, I was guessing that one was going to be under three ounces. So 2.88, which, you know, it's not a, a bug out mini. 1.5 ounces. It's, you know, still double the weight of that bad boy. But... You know, you're getting under three ounces for most people. That's a really nice carry weight. I'm going to guess this is more like three and a half ounces, if I had to guess. Three and a quarter, three and a half. I don't know if I'm feeling it right, but three and a quarter, 3.2. So it's definitely like half an ounce heavier, and I noticed that right away. I don't know if the blade is thicker. Um, Pretty similar, but it goes wider towards the end. Maybe that's just the shark's foot element of it. But um, anyway, <clears throat> really good impression. And I get why so many people hype this knife up so much. And I think what's happened in the last six months is the button lock craze is starting to make this one even a little less, not less relevant, but less exciting. Uh, as part of why I also didn't get it. I've got a CJRB uh, Pyrite on the way which I've been really excited to review. And, you know, they sold out really quickly on those, unfortunately. Um, but I got one of those on the way. That's, you know, these are going to definitely be coming out in that video. But let's uh, jump into the last one uh, here. And that is the, I'll just move, oops, move this over here for now. And then we'll bring it back because this one's going to need a weigh in also. Because this is another penguin. And I just wanted a slightly different variant. Now that's interesting this box is falling apart so that's looks like it got caught by a knife maybe you can see that there um so i'll chat with my guy at white mountain on that one but it looks like that one got caught by a knife maybe on a box opening I'm quite confident it wasn't me but i guess i could go back and watch the video and double check before i before i blame someone by mistake. This one's kind of hard to get open for some reason. Uh, so same paperwork, stickers, and uh, actually no stickers in this one. No stickers in this one. More expensive one. No stickers. And wow, that is some weight. That thing is a chunk of metal. So that's interesting. So this is the, um, the brass scale QSP Penguin. And that is a pretty impressive, that's pretty impressive for the price. I think this was about 50 bucks too. Um, you know, this, this kind of makes you go look at like a tactile knife at 300 bucks or, you know, even again, bringing this guy back out at 300 bucks. And it does make you second guess, like, should I just buy Chinese knives and call it good i bet this is actually chinese too but you know um something like this versus that like you get this thing in hand it's pretty damn impressive really nice knockdown just like the other one let's get these out and get this weed banter out of here get this guy out of here um Yeah, those are really nice scales. So I said brass, I think that's what I mean, right? Yeah, that's brass, not copper. Uh, let's grab that box back out. That's not the right one. It is the D2 blade brass handle penguin. And it has got some serious heft to it. Uh, just as smooth as the others. Actually, it's not. Uh, it's it's actually a little, there's a little more, I don't know if it's detent or friction or what, but this one feels stronger built for some reason. Boy, this knife feels so light now compared to having this in hand. Like, this is a cool looking knife, but it is like on the heavy side for sure. Um, to the point of like, for what... I don't know. It is really cool looking. So I could see the sacrifice there on the daily carry. But let's get away on that thing real quick. 
That is really nice looking though. While the uh, scale is getting set up, I'm just going to give you a, a close up on this because this is uh, pretty sweet to look at. Really nice looking. You know, I've seen hand custom Demcos have a very similar look to that, right? And the grind. These are really nice. I guess it's a flat grind, but it almost looks like a hollow grind. I have to double check. I mean, it almost looks like a hollow grind, but I assume it's a flat grind. The scale, though, is really quality, really nice. And then you get that deep carry clip. The black looks pretty good on there. I'd say, yeah, I'd say it looks pretty good on there. I'm like kind of going like, what could you have done? Maybe a kind of a dark brushed look would be nice on there. Like I have on, um, oh, where's my Demco Daily Carry? That could look really good on there if I'm seeing it right. But, you know, the black looks good. It's a definitely a bit of a sharp, like that is a little extreme on the uh, on the duck bill there. I will say that that would probably, like you don't feel it in hand, which is good at all. No hot spot from that, but um, dude, this is a freaking sweet knife. God, knives are so good right now uh, for what you pay. I mean, gosh, I may. I may have to gift this to someone for Christmas or something like that. Like this is a really impressive, impressive knife. Perfectly centered and just sweet on the action. Uh, so what do you think? Five, four and a half ounces, five ounces, 4.95 ounces. So that adds some serious heft. You're talking more than one and a half ounce increase versus the micarta this feels like a lightweight now although this is a really solid nice knife it feels so light by comparison like such a ready for daily carry knife and then this thing feels like a toy um you know despite the positive impression i had out of box it feels like a total toy after handling this brass one so this is really impressive that is a nice knife I mean, that's, that's going to go on my, the, you know, it's not drop shut. So that's the one thing I'll say. I don't know if over time this thing gets worked in more. You could shake it into shut. It's definitely not drop shut. You can slam it down a little bit like that. Let's see if this one's drop shut. Oops. Yeah, not really. Got to Kind of flick them down to make them close. I mean, in that sense, you definitely you get the sense. Wow, it is a really impressive like washer knife. Like, I don't know. You'd almost think it was. It doesn't quite feel like bearings, but it kind of does. This one feels like bearings to me. That thing just flies open. I could deploy this thing for hours. There's just like no resistance. Now where I couldn't deploy for hours would be putting my thumb directly on the thumb stud. It's a little pointy, but maybe you could like replace the thumb stud, upgrade it or something like that. Let's see, the, re the reverse flicks don't feel great on these so far. Like I think that's kind of weird. They cut this side out more than they cut this side out. I don't know why they would do that. They should, you know, do those pretty equally, but I don't know. Maybe that's standard. It's not bad. It's better than like, this is like one of those ones that's really hard to dig your finger into. The tactile knife rock wall. It's really hard to kind of get your finger in there to grab it. Um, and then, yeah. Wow, these are just really nice knives. I guess they have to do it that way for the liner lock is what I'm kind of guessing. Yeah, they're doing it that way because of the liner lock. Um, good first impression. Sorry for the long video, but um, hope you uh, enjoyed it. It's definitely uh, 
I'm gonna have to spend some time with these and potentially do some some scores. Some knives I score, some knives I don't. These feel like knives I should score for sure. Um, let's pull out that pangolin too for one last view and look here. Pangolins are some really weird man. <laughs> Like, I know you love the P names uh, and the bird names, but I don't know if that one was worth it to retain that concept QSP. So, yeah, a really cool haul. You know, you're talking 50, 100. I guess the four of them together do cost more than this particular model, but you're talking like $160 worth of knives here. And I've got $160 knives that I feel like aren't as nice as this. <laughs> um, you know, just honestly, like, that is pretty sweet. This one's definitely got a little more like friction to it on the deployment. You can see I'm struggling a bit more on that one. Um, than the other two, than the other three even. Like this one's, and maybe I just need to tinker with it a little and see if I can get it to, to work in. It almost just sounds like it needs some, maybe like some lubrication in the bearings. Or uh, I assume this is washers as well, copper washers. Um, and then this thing was just such a, joy to compare to hinderers so yeah i i get why qsp is so hyped right now like they're just producing really really cool knives for the money let's get these onto their show side for a final look i don't know that i've seen another company like we and civivi are certainly there but like different i guess they just take a little bit of a different approach in terms of where they put their money and their, uh, you know, quality and stuff. Let's put this one at the bottom, maybe, and go like that. That kind of looks like how it should end the show here. <laughs> I always kind of nerd out on trying to organize the knives in a cool way. Uh, but, yeah, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised. I... I'm not like overly surprised at the same time. There's like a lot of people really respect and like this knife brand for a reason. Um, so I'm not like shocked, but definitely pleasantly surprised. I thought it'd be good, but it's, I'd say great set of knives here. I'm really excited, kind of gets me that much more excited for that uh, CJRB to see how it kind of compares um, with these. Um, but these are, these are some pretty impressive knives for the money, I gotta say. I'm thoroughly impressed. So, yeah, definitely worth checking out, especially if you're in the market for, like, a budget, you know, uh, budget kind of knife, but you want a nice quality knife. You're gonna do everything you need to here. D2 blade steel, um, like that, to me, is probably the best all around of the bunch. Uh, this would be your... You know, you want a nice quality knife that has some heft to it and maybe even a little talking point. Like this one's got some character to it. That's a pretty freaking cool option. This is your budget. You know, I got the G10 one coming that was like 25 bucks on sale. Your, you know, very basic level, super budget version knife that gets you a knife that works super well. It's super light. Uh, and does its job it's kind of as, as advertised, if you will. Um, you know, this is going to be your a bit more of a gentleman's knife. It's a little hefty compared to, you know, your average gentleman's knife. But a really nice grind on the blade, really nice finish there, really nice handles. And, you know, you feel like you've got a quality, like that feels like a $200 knife in a lot of ways to me. I think they could have done a little, cosmetically done a little better on the end here. I think it's a little abrupt. Um, that's one thing I'll say. Um, and then here you've got your, you want to know what it's like to have a hinderer without having a hinderer. That's pretty sweet way of figuring that out. If that's the right size and format for you and, you know, if you'd like 
to take a test drive of a hinderer. This is probably about as close as you're going to get <laughs> um, for 50 bucks or whatever it is. So, yeah, QSP, good job. Got to say I'm impressed. And um, they're probably not for everyone, but a good set of knives that's for the right buyer here for sure. Um, and I got to think about what I'm going to do with some of these because they're, they're pretty cool. So, um, hope you enjoyed it. This is my first 40 minute video. So my apologies if you made it to this point, I'm, I'm sorry to take up so much of your night, but hopefully you got some value out of the video. I will see you on the next one and take care.